Throwback back Thursday and I'm honoured to welcome you to Joe News Interactive here on Joe News on Multi TV. We're also live on DSTV Channel 421 and Go TV Channel 144. Get your comments through to us on Joe News on TV on Facebook and Twitter. I'm Venice Abubedu. Settle down. Let's get the show started. Now, you know that after the atomic junction gas explosion, we've had a lot of people commenting about it. We've done it a lot of times here on Joy News Interactive. But today's angle is this. The LPG Marketing Companies Association of Ghana say that say their decision to suspend the sale of the LPG products to consumers may not end anytime soon. The association says it cannot provide information on when its members will resume work. Now, how will this, call it a strike, because some people have, how has it affected you or how would it affect you? Uh, on Facebook, Sadat Larry Kokroko says, there are a lot of charcoal sellers, no problem at all. And Flex Karim Jermaine says, this is unnecessary. They should continue their strike, we'll go back to the use of charcoal. But I will entreat Ghana Gas to take up this and provide gas to the people by themselves. Really? <laughs> anyway, Bayer Jeremiah says their decision is uncalled for and unnecessary. They took that decision in bad faith just to create a problem and uh, says they're not serious in doing genuine and transparent businesses in Ghana. All these things cannot stop the government from ensuring that the laws in the industry are complied with. with or without gas will eat. It's interesting because you see there's a story uh, that that we've, we've produced or a story that's on myjoyline.com and it's about the fact that uh, some restaurant owners would have to resort to the use of charcoal because this is almost like an indefinite uh, strike if you want to call it because nobody knows when these uh, uh, marketers or the LPG uh, distributors will resume work. But Kwabana Abolish Bivini says, government should quickly institute the cylinder recirculation program. No group of people should think they can blackmail government by holding the citizens to ransom. Anyway, all oil gas or oil gas stations are selling. And that's from Kwabana. Kojo Bene says, this is what we call mafia. We must stand and let them know we will not sit for them to finish us with their negligence. And uh, well, says, we can use electric stoves with stable power and uh, they will beg us to come and buy. Kojo Dia says, I bet this will not last for long. They need to sell as much as we need to buy. If the antelope will suffer, the hunter too will suffer. Interesting. Prince Pablo uh, thinks that there's no sense in this. Uh, he's asking, should we allow you to burn Ghana because of your service? Okay, quite harsh there from Prince. Sally Fugariba says, maybe, uh, all right. I'm not sure I want to re echo those sentiments. Maoli Stephen Lionel says, uh, please, I saw charcoal and charcoal stores. Interesting. Khalil Maestro says, people should just go back to charcoal if these people are not ready to supply the gas. Rosie Abua says, uh, you need Epsom salt to purge your members. Wow, that's pretty uh, harsh one. Kimi says, deforestation will start then. Mm, interesting. Livingstone Godfrey says, this is absurd. They can even stop operating. Ghanaians will live their normal lives. Well, would it be normal? Would it be very normal? Uh, Self demand says, don't mind them. I filled my cylinder yesterday. Maybe where you filled it, uh, the owner or operators are no members of the LPG Marketers Association. Uh, but Phyllis says, this is serious. Ghana. Papa Kwesi Ajikun says, so what should we use to cook? And it's asking, and that seems to be the trouble for a lot of people. What will they use to cook? Well, hopefully in the coming days we'll know uh, when this decision will end and uh, what you can also do to sort yourselves out. Uh, that is, if you need to use or cook using gas as fuel. Away from that, did you watch that match yesterday? Well, I did. I'm talking about the under-17 uh, World Cup going on right now. And the Black Starless, uh, well, I think it was an impressive game. And they are through to the next stage of the FIFA Under-17 tournament in India, thanks to a 2-0 win over African counterparts at Niger. Coach Park Wesi Fabian says his lads will win the trophy. I just want to find out from you. You know how sometimes you keep your hopes high and they are dashed? So I like to manage my emotions and my expectations. But I think that this squad can win this tournament. But what do you think? So that Larry 
Coco Cop says, yes, they will, because now they understand the game more. And um, he says, Sule is a fantastic player. Good luck to him. Felix Karim says, yes, we are winning. All we need to do is to be focused and make sure we utilize our chances. I want the coach to start Richard Danso. He's number nine. And he's a good striker and very strong and tall. The Malians are strong and tall. He should be paired with a year up front. Uh, Bayer Jeremiah says, yes, for sure. Looking and analyzing their performance so far, I strongly believe they can win the trophy. More moral support and prayers for the team. I wish them well. Kojo Bene says, we have to put up a good attitude to beat Mali. Those boys are strong. Uh, once we win that game against Mali, you're likely to fetch gold. Uh, <laughs> but he says, no to Galamse. I'm wondering why or how Galamse features in this conversation. But says, no penalty shoots. <laughs> Shoot out else hashtag illegal interesting hello maestro says to me their style of play is not appealing they should step up their game because the malians are very good wish them luck yeah amuaku yabua says yes they have all it takes to win the ultimate only if they stop being individualistic on the pitch and play as a team judicious Odro eric says to me i doubt because their style of play it's not encouraging despite their goals they need to stay focused i've had two people who don't think or who are not too confident about the starlets winning at this under 17 tournament but kwame morgan says sure if only they'll avoid complacency and be more serious oh than the black stars oh abubakar omar says we hope they bring us the trophy hussaini abdul razak says very well they can easily win the trophy if only they stop their selfish game. Another person talking about the style of game here, and uh, Yusuf Wahab says, This under 30, I'm wondering, are you being sarcastic, Yusuf? But he says, This under 30 Mali squad, you can't all, I beg. So he's not too confident uh, about our next game. Uh, we'll be playing against Mali. Chumasi Amano Reynolds says, Why not? We win the trophy by hook or crook. But the coach will start done so. And obviously, you'd expect that a lot of advice come in. Someone says uh, he should start Richard. Someone says that so well. Stephen Agbenu says, yes, we can. We are going to meet the USA in the finals and we'll beat them to win the trophy. He ends his comment with an amen. Eric McCall says, if they do away with politics, they can win through the support of Ghanaian's prayers. Abbasi Roxon says, yes, they will surely make it. I'm proud of them. And uh, Omar Amam Zuya says, I have faith in our young guys. A panel child says, yes, kudos boys, we are proud of you. And uh, Richard says, yes, why not? Stylus for gold. Phyllis says, surely. Joseph Michael says, okay, but it's not easy. So just like me, Joseph, we are trying to manage our expectations, but we wish them all the best. You're watching John News Interactive. When I come back, it's a throwback Thursday. Uh, yes, it is. We'll be doing something little about what some university in China is offering overweight students. And I'll also be showing you a video of the day, and it's about a prophecy. You don't want to miss it. Please stay. <music> Thanks for staying here on John News Interactive. Now, you know how we bring you issues that are trending we also bring you really weird stories from around the world so in china a university is offering overweight students the chance to enroll in a special weight loss program where they'll receive their grades not based on you know academic or any requirements but based on the amount of weight they shared and on how well they also do in class so it's a combination of the two and uh, a question today, we're just curious to find out, should this be tried here in Ghana? Well, since we, we now know that, well, we hear from the experts that obesity is on the rise. So Ace Ankoma Gideon says, will they be awarded a certificate and can they gain employment with it? He asks, if no, then it should not be brought here. But Gabe Saga says, yes, because some of these rich people have spoiled their children too much. Most of them are obese. Sally Fugariba says, work way after graduation. I think this media uh, don't know uh, you in Africa for that matter, GH. Akpalu Akpa says, a big girl is a girl with enough brains, not the one with more money. Okay, he goes on and on. It actually sounds like a poem. <laughs> if you ask me, it's a pretty long one. Anyway, thanks for your comment. Raouf Ray Masterflex says, I think, I think it's a good thing. Let's try it here. 
says there are too many obese people in Ghana. Yeah, and uh, Judicial Sodorik says, I think we should try as now decorations and body makeup, makeup uh, being taught in school. Chumesi sighs and says, are we Chinese? We should do it in the country. And Chris thinks that being overweight is a choice. So really, I mean, what's the point? If someone chooses to be overweight, what's your problem? That's according to Chris. Ahima Darling says, uh, Fredo Efua, actually tagging her friend, I'm sure, says, please tell your friends, oh, it's free. All right, and Kata Ennis says, are we Chinese? We won't work. Those who have ways to deal with it on your own. And Samuel Ford says, Ghanaians don't tolerate uh, nonsense, so I don't think they'll accept this kind of initiative. Interesting. Talking about initiatives, a 30-year-old man from Kentucky underwent some radical plastic surgery in order to physically resemble Jesus Christ. Now, I know there's this whole controversy about who Jesus was, what he really looks like, and all that, and some arguing he's not white, he's not black. But this man, well, actually had a surgery so he could look like Jesus Christ. I don't know which picture he referred to anyway. But he went so far as to spend more than $215,000 on two years worth of plastic surgery to change his physical appearance to resemble Jesus. Now, who do you want to look like if you had this amount of money and you had to spend it on plastic surgeries? Who would you want to look like and why? Mm. Nana Ikyo Uswa says, so they can use him for passion of Christ. <laughs> Francis Mensah says, deluded. No one has Jesus' picture. Hanging that picture on a wall in your room and churches, uh, according to him, he thinks it's purely idol worship, and I'm sure. And uh, Ikyo agrees with him. Melody Melotsti agrees. Um, Kweku says, why boss? Jesus came to the world in the form of a man, so his image might be drawn. You don't believe his image as him, but you believe that he came into this world and his words. Mowgli says, delusion. Rashid says, very true. And uh, well, they go on and on and on about it. But the question really has not been answered. And uh, Michael Dai says, the picture displayed is a drawing of the friend of uh, Michelle Angelo who drew it. Um, okay, he's actually encouraging the man to be like Yeshua. That's uh, Jesus, I think Hebrew name, is it? Yeah, Yeshua. Um, in spirit and in truth. Clifford Westy says, who even told him that's how Jesus looks like? Who snapped Jesus at that time? <laughs> you mean who took a photo of Jesus at that time? Says, what was the camera by then? Jesus was never a white man. I told you, there's always this controversy about whether he was a white man or not. But the question we pose to you today is if you had $215,000 and you had to undergo plastic surgery for two years, who would you want to look like? Seems a lot of you on our Facebook page are not interested in answering the question. You're more interested in what you make of this man's decision. Mohammed Zion says, the picture in circulation is not the picture of Jesus. The man said he acted in a movie as Jesus. Uh, why are people these days going wayward like this? Kweku Ennison says, um, well, he's asking if we've run out of stories. But we haven't. Uh, actually, what we do is to bring you interesting, weird news. George S. Owusu says, all images are depictions of Jesus, just to remind us of him. If he wants to be Christ-like, literally. And Martin Aluta says, do not worship or bow down to images, quoting a portion of scripture. Michael Udua says, here, he calls it an European brainwashed picture. No one can describe the looks and physique of Jesus. The popular picture is that of an European and not the Jew. Black Prince, oh, that's harsh. Some of what says, but who told him that the image of, that's the image of Jesus Christ? He laughs, says, how could he spend this huge amount of money to change his physical appearance? He could have sent it to an orphanage. Yeah, he could have. Abu Bakari Dazzling said, but that picture, uh, okay, yeah, you said it's Robert Powell's picture, not Jesus. So he just went to all that to look like an actor, not Jesus. On this about Kwabna says, but friends, don't forget, uh, he has his targeted market and uh, his Christians are chasing to see the so-called illusion. And remember, he's not doing it. All right, okay, trying to bring the race argument here. But you're still here live on John News Interactive. Let me take you to Twitter now. And um, the gentleman who scored... Ghana's second goal yesterday, Richard Danso, is 
trending is it sub down so scored a stupendous goal as ghana beat niger 2-0 on wednesday to reach the last eight of the 2017 and the 17 tournament and um nana kwekwa jaman is asking why they won't start him okay so someone said earlier when we we're discussing this in our comments on how they performed yesterday on the uh, part of the show when we we're discussing that someone thought that he should be started uh, richard Dunso. and um this one is from the gfa says call him the super sub richard Dunso doubles the lead ghana to Niger zero okay and so just as it has been referred here by the GFA tweet he was a substitute he was brought in later he scored the second goal and a lot of people have been asking just start him and this is from at Kwesinum says now that's a great goal why doesn't Richard Danso start for heaven's sake he shoots on target while the others just shoot aimlessly all right, so those are some of the comments. Hopefully, maybe Coach uh, Fabian will listen to the plea of many Ghanaians and start Richard Danso. But who knows? I sometimes, I will not sometimes, I really believe that these coaches know the players better. Probably, probably, and don't take me on for this, probably Richard, when, you, when he starts, won't be as, you know, uh, what's the word? He won't perform as well as he as he does when he's substituted. But once we get the results, that's what we want, isn't it? So he came in as a sub and he scored a second goal for us. Yeah, I think sometimes the coaches know what they're doing. Anyway, it's now time to show you our video of the day. And guess what? You know, usually you hear about prophecies on who will be president during election period or in the build-up to it. So we are actually in... 2017 now and the elections are in 2020 but here's a prophet who is predicting who will be president not even after president Okufuado but he says there will be another after president Okufuado and guess who will be the next president just listen to him for yourself listen. after president Nanado Danko Okufuado another president will come the third president is going to be the youngest president and the president god of force which is the young man is kwam sefakai if you are clapping go and i said after nana another president will come the next president after that president is kwam sefakai he will not do campaign they will go and fetch him and they will give him the mandates my prayer for him is that he will put his things in the right way because he's the chosen candidate of God for presidency. He will be the youngest man to reign for eight years in government. And he will be one of the president Ghanaians who love so much. Uh, May, when there is a prophecy, you clap. Yes, you heard it. He says, Ace broadcaster Kwame Sefakai will be president, not directly after President Akufuado. He tells us there will be a, another president then. Kwame Mr. Fakai will be given the press. The part that intrigues me, he says he will not even campaign, you know. He just become president, yeah. And uh, Sadat says, what a sad story. I don't know. She doesn't, or he doesn't tell us why it's a sad story. Um, uh, but Braku Yao thinks this is a false prophecy, says the youngest president uh, says he claims that Kwame is 50 years. Um, that's Kwame Mr. Fakai. And even if Nanado will serve four years, Kwame Sefakai will be 54 by... You didn't get the prophecy. There'll be another one before Kwame Sefakai. So he can't be... Yeah, it was more years. So, yeah. So, and he said there'll be another president after Nanai. The president also said four years. It means that Kwame will be 58 years. So what would make him the youngest president ever in Ghana? He says, says Chuck Rollins and Muhammad's age when they became president. <laughs> and he thinks that the pastor's church must be closed immediately. There are two replies to that. And... Um, 
Jacob Kunanji says, ah, prophecies, I said more. Sefa, no campaign, then you are president. Cool chop. And that was the part that also intrigued me. Mukta Isa says, call me a president. All right. And uh, Jimmy Emmanuel says he's dreaming, thinks that this prophet is an attention seeker. And John Akansu Robert is actually laughing, says he's really getting funny day by day in this country. And uh, Banana Poku says, yeah, I'll vote for Chairman General because I like him. And uh, all right. Oscar KG says, now uh, we've become quote unquote quite full in the uh, fools in the church they tell us to clap and we do fella junior says chairman general make you not take up don't <laughs> okay make you take up that's uh, that's to say just believe it say amen and sule yakubu says deputy god at work upon abdul razak said mr pastor come again yeah we do things this man just wants to make a name for himself he's an attention seeker so just in case you want to watch that video again just get onto our Facebook page, join us on TV, it's uploaded there. You can also leave your comments there. Today's a Thursday, and obviously we do a throwback. So here's a throwback picture for today. This is what the old circle used to look like. Yeah, do you remember that? But now, yeah, it's gone through some faces. And it's now what we refer to as Dubai in Ghana. So yeah, <laughs> there's a throwback photo. Some of us have really forgotten what Seiko looked like. This is what it, it was uh, at the time. And it's gone through a couple of phases now. We have that interchange there. So that'll be all for this edition of Joy News Interactive. I really appreciate that you can make time to join us here. My name is Benis Abu Bedu. But before I go, a world without journalists will be one in which people with power take advantage of the vulnerable. The Media Foundation for West Africa presents the West Africa Media Excellence Conference and Awards to inspire media excellence across West Africa. Now, the event comes off at the Mervyn Pick Ambassador Hotel on the 28th of October um, at 6.30 p.m. Get ready to celebrate excellent journalism in West Africa. The West African Media Excellence Conference and Awards event is supported by Tallow Oil, MTN, the U.S. Embassy, Ghana Chamber of Bulk Oil Distributors, Thumbit Bank, and Mervyn Pick Ambassador Hotel Media Partners. Uh, here in Ghana, Joy News, Class FM, Daily Guy newspaper, The Finder newspaper, and several West African media outlets. Then, just so you know, a couple of my colleagues are up to pick awards uh, Seth Kwame Boati, Manasseh Zuria Wuni, and uh, Justice Beiju. So, um, yeah, maybe you could just make your way there and give them all your support. <music>